Hello, I'm Christy and this is Positive Exploration. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how there is life after burnout. I'm in my late 40s and I thought that it was just too late for me to start getting inspired again or to um, have any ambition again or to uh, be optimistic and not so jaded. Leave your limitations, live and go against them, just let go and start up something new. Cause I know, I know, I know that what you planned out Everything that you built up isn't what you want And I know, I know, I know the life you're living Isn't that fulfilling, let me help you out I didn't think that there would be life after burnout And what do I mean by that? I mean, I was so done with everything. There was not a job description in the world that excited me. There was not anything that I ever wanted to do for anyone else ever again. Which is part of why I started doing things on my own, like doing YouTube videos and uh, writing and things. I enjoy those things, nothing else gets in the way of it, and it's just enjoyable for me. Outside of that, I just had a hard time imagining for a good two years. I had a hard time imagining ever being motivated again, ever having any sort of ambition again. I, I was just so done. I was just so tired of it all. Since I've been able to slow down um, and do things at a better pace that's more for me, I was able to get back into it. As I've said before, I've started this channel from a place of pain. And it took me a couple of years to really get out of it. I mean, it was a very gradual process with things very gradually improving. Because, you know, it's not like I could take a leave of absence or, or just take time off and not work because you know, bills. So I had to keep a job and I wasn't motivated to look for a job, even though I did and I did apply at places, but I'm so glad that I didn't get those roles because at the end of the day, to go from one place where I didn't enjoy the job description there anymore, it didn't really make sense to me to go to another place with the same job description and think I was going to like it better. I mean, maybe the culture would have been better, but I think ultimately the grass wouldn't have necessarily been greener. So I'm glad I didn't do all of that even though I was trying because I was so hurt. I'm in my late 40s and I thought that it was just too late for me to start getting inspired again or to um, have any ambition again or to uh, be optimistic and not so jaded. But I find myself, you know, being cautiously optimistic person, but also not jaded. Burnout isn't just being tired of your job or not wanting to do it anymore. There's usually other reasons for it that relate to culture, which unfortunately most places do have, you know, 
a culture, there's some, there's some cracks in the culture. Maybe one place doesn't have all these things over here that bother you, but the other place makes up for it in other things. Or maybe it's really, when you get there, you find out it's not really all that different. So bullies in the office or workplace, they're everywhere. They're always everywhere. Um, you gotta look out for them. You know, people talk a lot about narcissists and sociopaths these days. And you know, they're not just these people lurking out there trying to hurt you physically. Most of them are just other people sitting next to you or even, you know, might be a leader who, you know, gets their way in the ways that they get their way. There are bullies, there's micromanagers who don't trust you or who are threatened by you, who just, they have to know everything you're doing every minute. There are people who are less concerned about stuff that they should be doing and, is, and are watching everybody else for things they're doing wrong. And that's not necessarily a boss. That could be anybody in your office area. There are also managers who are the opposite of micromanagers. They don't know what they're doing, so it's your fault. That's a very common one. There's all kinds of other things that run the human gambit of people who are make the culture unpleasant. Um, and when you are in a situation where you have even just more than one of these things going on, it's rough. All of these things, and I'm sure you have many other types of stories or similar stories that you could tell about your workplaces. And the reason you do is because this is the world we live in. This is how people are. It's tough to get away from, really. And, and there's people out there trying to find jobs where they'll be happier and they work around people they like and who treat them well. And I agree with really trying to find that. But I'm, I'm just saying that means you really have to dig in and do your research and um, maybe ask questions of people who do work there um, or people you know who know these people or, or some way of finding out, you know, or, and do the best you can during the interview to get a good feel for who your supervisor is because that, that matters a lot and who the people you're gonna be around the most are like. You know, um, if you have to deal with a difficult person on the regular, because that's just how Joe is, um, <laughs> um, but he's the only problem and everybody else is supportive of you, that might be okay to deal with as opposed to everybody supporting Joe. How this happened for me was that I took a demotion which immediately meant in this situation that um, tons of things came off of my calendar. So you know and part of my problem in the position was that I was already burnt out when I started the position that I left. So I took the demotion and instead of my hours being 7.30 to 6 or 7 every day, my hours went to 8 to 5. I worked on myself. I mean, this took time for me to get here. I worked on things on my own time at home. I spent my weekends, however, however I needed to. And I eventually got to a place where I'm like, okay, here are things that I could have done better. And oh, I see 
I was burning out and that's why I didn't do everything I could have done. I was so exhausted and wasn't up for, you know, and sometimes when you're working, you do have to push back on people and I just didn't have the energy to do that. I saw that burnout. I, I learned more about it and saw that that's what was going on. And I was able to breathe during this time. I still did my new job description, but I also told myself that work is work. Work is not my whole worth. It's not everything I am. And there are other things I want to do with my life, other things I want my life to mean. Everything, all of me, is not going to be wrapped up in work and nor is it going to be wrapped up in what other people who at work who by the way are probably trying to make themselves look good and feel good think of me or have to say about me i think it helps to sit back and accept that things aren't going to be perfect because they never are that's not the world we live in and that if you are all wrapped up and things going on at work, you need to take a step back because it's not worth it. It really isn't. At the end of the day, your health is not worth some job. And but at the same time, there's no perfect place. There are definitely no perfect people, including you, which is why I encourage that you take a look at yourself as well. Okay? Do some emotional intelligence work for one thing and try to see things from the other side of it. I think that life after burnout, if you don't want to go back to being burnt out again, is to remember that, you know, you can't control other people. I read something the other day that said there were have been a lot of people who changed jobs during the great resignation or the great reassessment or whatever you want to call it, who have regret. And I did do a video while this great resignation thing was getting going. Those of you who are being discriminant in your choices of where to apply, where to send resumes, um, I think that you are more likely to find something that you do enjoy better because you're being discriminant. If you're out there just trying to make more money, um, all right, but just know that you're probably going to be given a lot more responsibility. Um, it may mean more stress. I get that, you know, higher pay doesn't necessarily have to mean that. It can just mean that you're working for a better place that pays better and uh, has better perks, has better culture, has, you know, better hours, more flexible hours. Um, totally, totally a possibility. Um, I'm skeptical that that means most places though. If you can afford to be discriminant on where you're applying and really think, really consider what you want. I do have a feeling that a lot of people, when they find their places, there's still going to be a good percentage of people unhappy with their jobs. I'm not saying don't take the chance. I just want you to realize that the grass isn't always greener. I'm just so thankful that I didn't jump ship, that I didn't just grab the first thing that came along or that they didn't grab me. Um, I'm, because I just really feel like I would not be in a better place right now. I'm glad that I worked 
on everything I needed to work on concerning my mental health and I was able to move on even while still being there. I was able to move on up here. Now that I'm in a position that I actually like, you know, I actually like what I'm doing. I actually enjoy things about it that are more conducive to my personality, my introverted personality. And there's certain things that I am not, I don't have to do anymore. <laughs> And I am super grateful for that, and that just energizes me and makes me want to do my best. Um, if you have any questions or comments or things to contribute, um, put them in the comments below, and I will see you next time.